Hi everyone. If you were a fan of Windows 7 and thinking of running it on your modern PC that has a 12th generation or later of Intel Core i5 or i7 processor, or its AMD equivalent and 16 to 32 gigabytes of RAM for occasional needs, you should consider running on a virtual machine rather than directly on your real hardware. The Windows 7 minimum hardware requirements are very low compared to the current hardware specifications. Utilizing just 4 cores of your 2 GHz processor and 4 GB of your RAM is already enough to make Windows 7 run quite fast for everyday use. So running it directly on your real high-specs hardware may not be the most efficient way to go. In addition to that, as I showed in my earlier video on how to create a Windows 7 bootable USB flash drive, installing Windows 7 directly on a modern UEFI-based system in a single boot mode might not always be straightforward. If your motherboard does not support CSM or compatibility support mode, you'll get this Windows Boot Manager error during the installation. Or if you try installing it from a bootable USB flash drive, you'll get this missing DVD drive device driver error. So why not just run it on a virtual machine like mine here, where I run Windows 7 on top of Windows 11. I can run both operating systems simultaneously without any significant impact on my Windows 11, which is more convenient than running it in a dual boot configuration where we need to restart the PC whenever we want to switch to the other operating system. I can access the internet, access my USB flash drive, access any folder on my Windows 11, as well as easily drag and drop files from my Windows 11 to Windows 7. If this sounds good to you, please continue watching this video to find out how to install Windows 7 on a virtual machine in just a few steps. But before I proceed with the tutorial, to avoid any confusion about the technical terms I use later, let me first quickly explain two basic terms in the virtualization technology. Your PC's current operating system, with a virtualization program and a virtual machine will run on, will be referred to as the host operating system. For my case, the host is Windows 11 24H2. On the other hand, the operating system running on the virtual machine, in this case is Windows 7, is referred to as the guest operating system. All right. Let's just get started. So the first thing you need to have is a virtualization software for creating a virtual machine on which will run Windows 7. For my demo setup I showed earlier, I used Oracle VirtualBox, which is a free open source virtualization software developed by Oracle Corporation. So click the link to the official VirtualBox download page on this video's description, and you should be brought to this web page. Then download the appropriate package for your current operating system. For my case here, I'll click Windows Hosts. You also need to download the latest VirtualBox extension pack, so just click Accept and Download to download it. In addition to this extension pack, if you want to install VirtualBox on a Windows PC, you may also need to have Python Core Win32 API installed on that PC. Although it is optional, I would recommend that you install it to get the full capabilities and power of VirtualBox. If you don't install the Python Core Win32 API, you will get this warning message during the VirtualBox installation but you can still proceed with the installation and your VirtualBox will still work just fine, except for some advanced features. For this tutorial, I will install the Python Core Win32 API first before installing VirtualBox. So go to the Python download page by clicking the link on this video's description, and then click Download Python 3 to get the latest Python installer. Once the three files have been successfully downloaded, open your download folder. So now you should have the VirtualBox installer, the extension pack, and the Python installer. Out of these three installers, Python Core Win32 API has to be installed first. So double-click the Python installer to begin the installation. Make sure you check both the Use Admin Privileges and the Add Python.exe to Path checkboxes, and then click Install Now. Once done, click Close, and then open the command prompt as an administrator. On the command prompt, type this command line, and then press Enter. If upon successful installation, Python installer says there is a new update for the Python Core Win32 API, simply follow the instruction to install the latest update. Once the Python Core Win32 API is successfully installed, restart your PC for the new API to take effect. Alright, so after restarting the PC, we are ready to proceed with the VirtualBox installation. Open your download folder again and double-click the VirtualBox installer to start the installation. Then simply follow the on-screen instructions to do the installation. Once done, on the VirtualBox welcome screen, click Expert Mode. Now go back to your download folder one more time, and double-click the VirtualBox extension pack to install it. 
Click Install to proceed with the installation, and then scroll down the license page to enable the buttons. Then click I agree to begin the installation. After the extension pack is successfully installed, click the Tools menu, and then click Extensions. On the Extensions Manager window, you should see the extension pack you just installed. All right, so now your VirtualBox is ready and you may proceed to create a virtual machine and then install Windows 7 on it. To do that, you'll need a Windows 7 ISO file. For this tutorial, I'm going to install the 64-bit Windows 7 Pro. So go back to the VirtualBox welcome screen, click the New button, or you can also click Machines on the menu bar, and then click New to create a new virtual machine. On the Create Virtual Machine dialog, first give a name to the virtual machine you want to create. And then you may choose other folder for this virtual machine, or just keep the default one. This is where all your Windows 7 files are going to be saved throughout your virtual machine's lifetime. After that, under ISO image, click the down arrow, and then click other. Look for your Windows 7 ISO file, and then click open. If your ISO file contains multiple editions, select the Windows 7 edition you wish to install, and leave the selected type and version. Then check the Skip Unattended Installation checkbox because we're going to do the installation in the normal way where we go through each step and answer the setup questions manually. Then click Next. On the Hardware Configuration, you may keep the default values or change them to your preferences. For my case here, since my PC's RAM is 16 gigabytes, I'm going to increase the RAM to 4096 megabytes or 4 gigabytes so that my Windows 7 will have more space to run multiple applications. And then for the CPU, I'll set it to 4 which should be enough to make my Windows 7 run fast. Leave the Enable EFI unchecked, and then click Next. On the Virtual Hard Disk configuration, you may leave the disk size at 32 gigabytes or increase it to your need. Leave the Pre-Allocate Full Size checkbox clear, so that your actual hard drive space on the host machine will only be taken up as needed up to the size you set above, as you use Windows 7 later. Then click Next. On the summary of your virtual machine's main configuration, if you still want to modify it, click Back, Otherwise, click Finish. All right, so here they are, our virtual machine's full specifications to run Windows 7. Now, click the Video Memory Size under Display section, and then increase its value to 256 megabytes so that your Windows 7 will run smoothly. And if you use multiple display monitors, click Display, and then change the monitor count. You may also adjust the display scale factor if desired. Then click OK to save the changes. All right, so that's all we need to configure on the virtual machine, and now we are ready to install Windows 7 on it. To do that, simply click Start to power up the virtual machine and begin the installation. So here it is, Windows 7 installation on a virtual machine. Simply follow the setup instructions as you would normally do when installing Windows 7 on a real hardware. All right, so here it is, Windows 7 running on a modern computer via virtual machine. But we are not done yet. If I set the virtual machine's window to full screen mode, the Windows 7 desktop does not automatically change to full screen mode. To enable the guest operating system's full screen mode, and also other important features like host USB device access, shared folders and clipboard, and drag and drop between the host and the guest, we will need to install the guest editions on this Windows 7. To do that, Click Devices on the Virtual Machines menu bar, and then click Insert Guest Editions CD Image to mount the image to Windows 7. After that, open File Explorer, click Computer, and then double-click the VirtualBox Guest Edition CD. Double-click the appropriate VBox Windows Edition setup file to begin the installation, and then simply follow the instructions on the setup wizard. Once done, reboot the Windows 7 Virtual Machine. All right, so now you may enable the full screen mode and use all the guest host interoperability features I mentioned just now. To bring Windows 7 to full screen mode, click View and then Full Screen Mode. Or simply press the right control and the F keys on the keyboard to toggle between the windowed and the full screen modes. To access a USB device on the host from Windows 7, click Devices, select USB, and then click the USB device you want to access. 
As you can see here, my iMation USB flash drive is mounted and becomes accessible from Windows 7. But please take note that, while being mounted to the guest operating system, the USB device will not be accessible from the host. And then to access any folder on the host operating system from the guest, you have to share those folders first. So click Devices, select Shared Folders, and then click Shared Folder Settings. On the Shared Folder Settings, click the Add New Shared Folders button. On the Add Share dialog, first select the folder on the host that you want to access from this Windows 7. You may give it another name or use the same one. Then you may make this shared folder read-only or writable. For quick access on the File Explorer, check Auto Mount. If you leave the Make Permanent checkbox unchecked, this shared folder will only be accessible during this session and be gone after you shut down or restart this virtual machine. But if you make it permanent, your shared folder will always be accessible whenever you turn on this virtual machine. Then click OK twice to add this shared folder to Windows 7. So as you can see here, with the auto mount enabled, your shared folder is automatically mounted as a network drive. If you did not enable auto mount, you will have to access it from the network under VBox SVR. All right, the next thing is to enable the shared clipboard and the drag and drop features. To enable the shared clipboard, click Devices, Shared Clipboard, and then select your preferred share direction. You can repeat the same steps to enable the drag and drop between the host and the guest. So now I can easily copy any file from the host to guest and vice versa. All right, so that's how easy it is to run Windows 7 on a VirtualBox virtual machine. I hope you find this tutorial useful and thank you for watching.